cold. <laughs> it's really cold today, uh, but I still felt like I really need to go out at least once to get some fresh air. And then I felt like I should do a photo walk and I should uh, snap some photos with my new camera. This is the Fuji X100B. This camera is not really that new anymore, it's been out for like a few years. Uh, but I wanted to try it uh, because I've been a big fan of the Ricoh GR3 series, currently my favorite day-to-day -day camera for non-macro photography is the Ricoh GR3X, uh, which is a lot smaller and lighter than the Fuji X100V. But the big problem or the shortcoming of the Ricoh is that it doesn't have a viewfinder. And uh, this camera has a really good viewfinder and it still is pretty compact, has a big sensor and a very fast lens. So I felt it would be interesting to try it. So I bought a used one for like $130 or so and uh, planning to use it for a while and if I don't like it I will just sell it again and if I do like it I might maybe replace my Ricoh. So, another difference between the Ricoh GR3 and the Fuji is that the Ricoh has uh, really good image stabilization and this camera does not have image stabilization at all. Um, that is not something I find to be a big issue, but it's important to know it uh, when you set shutter speeds and so on. Such a beautiful day today. For whatever reason, the auto white balance seems very off. It's just super, super blue. And I tried to set it manually to something better. <sighs> Let's try 8000 Kelvin. Ah, that's close enough. I will adjust it more in post. And it's the middle of the day right now. It's like one o'clock, but the sun is actually just going down right about now. Because we are so far up north at the moment. I'm in Boden, which is like almost at the top of Sweden. And it is one of the darkest days of the year as well. Just a few days after Christmas. But I really love how everything looks today because we have like a slight mist because of the cold and uh, yeah, it's just beautiful everywhere, I think. Gonna try to snap um, a couple more tree photos back here. And not only does the Fuji X100V have a viewfinder, it has a really good viewfinder of an unusual type. It's a hybrid viewfinder, so you have both an optical viewfinder, like in a rangefinder camera, where you have a frame inside the viewfinder where you see where the picture will be. And I really find that useful and nice because then I can kind of get hints where I should move the camera to get a better composition because I see a little bit outside the actual picture. And then I can very easily switch to a completely normal electrical viewfinder. So I have that as well if I want to. And I really love that I can move between these. It makes the photography more playful and fun to me. Maybe it's just because it's new to me, I'm not sure, but so far I really love that. This looks very nice. But during the first few days of me using the Fuji x and I actually have been a little bit disappointed in the white balance. It feels like, like it's pretty far off quite often. Uh, definitely worse than any of my Sony cameras or my Ricoh. Not sure why that is.
Right now I have a setting where I use the optical viewfinder to frame and take the photo, but then immediately when I press the shutter I have a preview of the finished photo with the right exposure and everything. And I really love that mode because then I can get the joy of using an optical viewfinder but I can also see immediately whether my picture turned out good or not. So that's I, I really love that combination. These days, between Christmas and New Year's, I usually think a lot about the upcoming year and what my goals should be and what I want to do more of and how I should approach the year from like a strategic standpoint. And right now I'm thinking that I should actually be less strategic in 2024 when it comes to YouTube. Uh, I, I will probably try less to make like viral hit videos and instead just do more of the kind of videos I enjoy, like these ones where I just walk around and take photos and have fun. Uh, because I think in the end, the end result would probably be the same or maybe even better if I do just these fun, easygoing walk around videos. And I will also enjoy myself more and that will probably make me do a lot more videos, which in turn will maybe lead to more views overall. So yeah, this year I'm gonna do more photo walks, more relaxed videos that don't require too much work from me. Uh, more videos like this one, quite simply. This looks nice. I really love these super simple compositions. A lot of people probably find them boring, but I don't know, I, I find them beautiful. And uh, I find it really joyful to take these kinds of pictures. Even though they are so simple to take when you have a landscape that looks like this. And the focal length of the Fuji X100V is 35mm. And after doing photography for like 6-7 years now, after trying all imaginable focal lengths, I actually think that 35mm is probably my favorite one. It's a close tie with 40mm, which is of course very close, but those two, they really do the trick for me. And uh, the Ricoh GR3X has 40mm equivalent in focal length. Uh, that is why I prefer that one over the Ricoh GR3, which is 28mm. That one is a bit wider, more like an iPhone. This tree was pretty cool. Let's take a shot. Ah, I need to back up a little bit. Are you following? Ah, that's great. I need to back up a bit more, I think. Gonna make it easier for camera. It is pretty dark, so I'm shooting at f4, which should give me enough depth of field because most of the subjects are just trees a bit away, so they don't really require that much depth of field. Then ISO 200 to avoid noise. And I land at a shutter speed, which is pretty slow, but should hopefully be enough. As you know, the rule of thumb is that you should have a shutter speed, which is at least as fast as your focal length. So in this case, yeah, like 35 mm equivalent. Which means 1 35th of a second or so. But of course you also need to really try to hold the camera still. <laughs> we have another nice tree. And you know what else I really love about being here, so far up north in this time of the year, is that since the sun is barely going up, above the horizon, it's only up for like a couple of hours, it goes up and down very very slowly as well. That is one of the effects of being so far from the equator. 
And that basically means that the whole day is like a very, very long sunrise and a very, very long sunset. So you have kind of this beautiful twilight light most of the day. Today is very cloudy, so we don't have that much twilight light. It would be even more beautiful if it wasn't so cloudy, but still we have a bit of these twilight tones and I really love that. These are beautiful trees. Let's take a snapshot of them. Not sure I like that photo. Let's move on. Anyway, if you are trying to decide between the Ricoh GR3 or 3X and the Fuji X100V, uh, I would say that what you should consider is basically that the Ricohs, they are so small that you can easily put them in a jeans pocket. They are like a small smartphone, and a little, little bit thicker. And they are very, very lightweight, but they don't have a viewfinder. On the other hand, the X100V, while being compact, you cannot fit it in a jeans pocket. And even if you have it in a jacket pocket, it will weigh you down a bit. It is pretty heavy for its size. That was actually my first impression when I unboxed this camera, that wow, this is a very heavy camera. And part of the reason for that is that it is more made of metal, most of it is metal, and the Ricoh GR cameras, they are mostly plastic. Uh, I personally prefer the camera to be mostly plastic, because it is so much lighter, so I barely feel it in my pocket. Uh, but I can understand that some people prefer uh, to have a more sturdy camera that can take more of a beating. Yeah, it's, I guess it's a personal preference. But if you really, really, really must have a viewfinder, of course you should get the Fuji. And if you think you could live without a viewfinder, and you want the most compact big sensor camera you can get, I would go for the Ricoh. These trees are so beautiful, and every time I walk past here, no matter if it's night or day, summer or winter, I always feel like I have to snap a photo of them because it pretty much always makes for a beautiful photo. So I'm gonna try today as well. I think a good angle might be here towards the end of this row. Let's see. I want to get as little of the street lights and stuff as possible. I want to have a clean background. Let's see. We'll first try here, I think. Okay, I didn't try to get all of them. Let's back up a little bit. Let's try here. I think that's a good framing. I like that one. Let's try this angle as well. It's also pretty nice. Here as well, I think I will try. Another difference between the Rico and the Fuji is that on the Fuji you actually have a screen that you can flip out like this, which is very handy and useful in many situations. And I do have to say that I really enjoy having a viewfinder. It makes photography 
I don't I don't think you strictly take better photos necessarily, but it makes photography more enjoyable, I think, to have a viewfinder because you can really see what photo you're taking and how it turns out, no matter if it's sunny or like you have a lot of glare on your screen. It is a really nice thing to have a viewfinder. I would really have loved to go over there to take a photo of this nice row. But the snow is like over one meter deep, so yeah, I, I don't I don't feel it is worth it to get that snowy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna skip it for now. One thing that the Fuji cameras are known for is that you have these picture profiles or film stocks or whatever you want to call them, They're like predefined ways to render the JPEGs. And they are pretty nice, but I don't know, I tried some of them, but I didn't really love any of them. So I'm gonna just stick to shooting raw, I think, and, and finding my own style in Lightroom. I think that is what I prefer still. The Ricoh cameras also have like a similar thing, uh, but what none of these cameras or any camera has, which I would prefer, would be to have a way to make a preset in Lightroom with my own like favorite go-to editing settings, and then just simply export that into the camera, import it into the camera to use that as a picture profile. I would really love a feature like that because then I would be able to preview the photo immediately with my editing on it whenever I take it. And it's so weird I think that no nobody has thought of that yet. Wouldn't be too hard to implement either I think. By the way, what are your plans for 2024? Do you have any exciting photography projects or trips or things you want to do? do you, are you working on something in particular or do you have particular goals with your photography for 2024? I would love to hear about them. Maybe we can inspire each other with ideas for things to have as goals or as projects. So please comment below if you have any of that. For me personally, as I've been talking about in the previous video and in this one, my goal is to do more of what I find enjoyable and fun, which is to do more photo walks and more photo walk videos like this one. I'm gonna try to do even more of that in 2024. This could potentially be an interesting scene. Uh, not sure, it's kind of a gamble, but I'll try. It's nicely minimalistic and so on, but a bit too boring maybe. But you never know until you've tried, right? I have to say I'm impressed with how well the camera handles the cold. It's minus 22 degrees Celsius and uh, I've been out for like 45 minutes taking photos and the battery indicator still says the battery is strong, like 70% or so. So that was actually a lot better than I expected. Okay, now I'm almost back home. It's one hour since I went out. Now the camera died. <laughs> so about one hour in minus 22 degrees. 
also I'm kind of impressed that I can get away with having my very thin glove on the right hand. Uh, of course my fingers feel cold, but as long as I'm walking like this and not and I'm not standing still for too long at a time, it works well. And it's nice because it's so easy to control the camera and I can use touch screens and everything. So, But then I have thicker gloves with me. On my left hand I have one over the thin glove. Uh, and uh, whenever I'm not using my right hand for a while, I just take this one on to feel a bit warmer. And it works very well. And it doesn't get much colder than this in Sweden, so I think I finally have nailed the glove strategy. <laughs> so the last time it was snowing was like two or three days ago. And you can kind of see that if you look at the trees that uh, the snow is a bit old. So ideally if you want to capture beautiful snowscapes you want to be out photographing the day after it has been snowing or preferably even the same day when the snow is completely fresh because then it is more like fluffy and it is uh, more of it everywhere and uh, it is smoother you have less tracks everywhere and you have much more of a winter wonderland feel to it but of course you can still go out on a day like today like three days after it has been snowing and, and capture some nice photos it's just that it's not as ideal as going out the same day. And with that I think I'm done for now. I'm starting to feel a bit cold and it's starting to get really dark. So I think I'm gonna go home now. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon again.